San Diego is presently notifying homeowners and other residents who may be impacted by a new map, two maps that have been released by the California Geological Survey, expanding on existing fault zones in the city. We're joined now by a familiar face, geologist Dr. Pat Abbott. Dr. Abbott, good to see you again. Good to be here. So this new map that's been released is very specific in terms of showing the main Rose Canyon fault, but then some fingers that come off of it, especially around Coronado Island, downtown San Diego. Uh, describe it for us. I, I imagine that you're familiar with it. Yes, indeed. Now, the Rose Canyon Fault has been on the geology maps for over uh, 100 years, and it's on this other map as a green line underneath it. Now, what we're seeing then are the overlays, what these Alquist Priolo overlays. In other words, where are areas that are at risk at, of being seriously damaged in an earthquake? And what's really new here is the fact that in recent earthquakes, we've seen that the movement hasn't just been solely on one major fault, but the, it's distributed. It actually occurs on a number of sub-parallel faults. This became very evident in uh, New Zealand um, in 2016, the Kaikoura earthquake had movement on 25 separate faults. Now, not all of them moving the same amount, but that meant the movement took place over a wider area. And of course, that's the concern here. They're uh, just drawing a red line down the map is very significant. However, it's the zones of concern are wider than simply shown by that red line. And that's what we're trying to do here is, is uh, broaden those to go over some of the smaller sub-parallel faults, the areas where people could suffer uh, significant damage. Yeah, and those, and what they're showing now is very specific, and there are gonna be homeowners who are gonna receive this map and go, wait a minute, my house sits right on that particular finger that's coming off of this main fault. What does that mean in terms of the energy that would be released there or how the ground would move there? How much more risk are they facing? Well, you know, there's the, the uh, if, if we go back in time here for, for mapping the faults in San Diego, one of the problems for geologists is that buildings were built on the ground before faults were looked for and, and mapped. So we don't get the full picture of where all the faults are. So that's part of the reason you make a broader zone because other faults trend into that zone. Now, what we're talking about here is not, not uh, increasing death as much as uh, uh, spreading damage out more. If the main movement mo moves several feet on the main fault, but another fault a quarter mile away moves 10 inches, and that 10 inches, for example, runs underneath the concrete slab in your house and causes significant damages and breaks all the pipes coming in and out of, out of your home. In other words, the damage there is extensive. So part of what this new uh, pushes for is to broaden the area where the building codes would be stronger so things would be better prepared or be able to handle the fact that even smaller faults associated with the main one can release enough energy that they do significant damage. As you said, a lot of the homes, though, that have already been put in place were built before we were worried about such a thing. Is there anything in terms of people finding out, okay, now this fault I know is going right underneath my house that I should be doing now to protect myself? Well, indeed, this is the, the retrofitting. There, there are lots of things that can be done to homes to make them better. But let me, let me first say that a typical San Diego home, a wood frame, one story, two story house, they're actually a good structure. In other words, I don't want to put terror into people's minds just with thinking their whole house is going to come crashing down. A lot of the worries are over specific types of buildings, brick buildings old, before, built before 1932, uh, what we call wide span roofs, where they where they lift up a roof and set it on some walls and maybe didn't attach it together well. We have things called cripple walls, where some houses are not built directly on the ground, but there'll be a little wall, and then the house is built on top of that. The cripple wall can collapse. So now there's certain types of buildings in particular that we're most concerned about, and uh, well, those are things that could be identified in individual homes. And, and, and the basic thing on, on most of those is simply tying elements together. The retrofitting is a lot of bolting, strapping, tying. In other words, making the house more able to move, shake, roll with earthquake waves and not suffer damage. Dr. Pat Abbott, those notices are going out. Your words are very comforting. Thank you again, sir, for your time. Uh, my pleasure.